In this video, we're going to look at two sample techniques for forming a t-test, specifically a two-tailed version, but, but in general, looking at two sample things. Now, if you recall, in our last video, we looked at a, a two-sample, sort of, that was dependent samples, before and after data. So we found out that that really wasn't two samples. That is actually one sample of ordered pairs. And so we treated that as a one sample of differences. Here we're also kind of looking at the differences between two, but these two samples are independent samples and potentially from different populations. We'll use subscripts to identify the parameters for each sample, like x bar sub 1 is the sample mean for the first sample, x bar sub 2 for the second sample. Corresponding population means are mu 1 and mu 2, and corresponding sam uh, variances are sigma 1 squared and sigma 2 squared and so forth. So if both populations are normally distributed then the differences in the sample means will be distributed normally with a difference being x bar 1 minus x bar 2 and the mean of the differences mu of the differences is mu 1 minus mu 2 and sigma sub d is sig is um, well the sum of the variance the variance of the difference is the sum of the variances but to get a standard deviation you need to take the square root so Standard deviation of the difference of the of the sample differences is sigma one square over n one plus sigma two square over n two and then square root. So we have these particular things, and it turns out that the t statistic, where you take the difference minus mu of the differences divided by s sub d, which is this s sub d right here, that gives you a t statistic. Okay, and it's distributed by t distribution but the degrees of freedom is kind of a regular complicated formula and this is what's called the non-pooled version in an earlier video we talked a little bit about a pooled version versus a non-pooled version when we did two sample um, t intervals it's the same formulas there that we had talked about back there uh, but notice that this one particularly the degree freedom one is, is kind of nasty Fortunately, we do not need to do those because the TI, the calculators have a two sample t-test wizard program or app built into them. And so it knows these formulas and we don't have to know them. Now, if we have data from independent samples from two populations with different standard deviations, we have to use the non-pool versions of the t-test given on the previous slide. If we're very sure that the two populations have the same standard deviation, then we can increase the power of the test, in other words, decrease the probability of a type 2 error, by pooling all the data together and estimate the standard deviation of the differences of the means. So using a pooled test makes the formula easier for the degrees of freedom. It's just n1 uh, plus n2 minus 1, but it makes the calculation of the estimated standard deviation uh, harder. Um, so, regard and, and those formulas are given in an earlier video where I talk about two-tailed t or, or two-sample t intervals. Uh, but the, the the thing is, we don't need to know those for my class. Uh, the calculator wizard lets you use the pooled or non-pooled estimates, uh, and in this course, my course at least, will always use the non-pooled versions for the test. So when it comes to that choice, you will always just choose non-pooled. So here's an example of this at work here. So a study was performed to determine differences between diastolic blood pressure reading between men and women. The following table gives summary statistics for the two groups of subjects. We had 13 females with a mean of 71.08 and a standard deviation of 9.22. We had 16 males with a mean of 77.37 and a standard deviation of 8.35. So the question is, is there sufficient evidence that the alpha equals 0 0.05 level to determine that there is a, a difference in the diastolic blood pressure reading between the men and the women. And then we can also go ahead and compute a 95% confidence interval for the difference in the blood pressure and we're going to do females minus uh, males. Okay, so uh, let's see what we're doing here. We're comparing means from two independent samples. 
and the uh, standard deviations for the samples are known but not for the populations and we're going to go under the assumption that the uh, differences are at least are approximately normal um, it didn't quite say that but we kind of need that with these sample sizes or at least eh, maybe not exactly normal but we need at least not too far off of being normal for that if we actually had the samples we could maybe do something like uh, a normal probability plot or for, for example to see if they were normal enough so anyway with these conditions satisfied we have enough to use a two sample t interval using those formulas that I just showed you earlier but again we don't have to worry about the formulas the calculator will actually just do it for us so here are the, the settings on a TI 84 uh, TI inspire would work very similarly so we do um, let's see stat and then tests we choose a two sample t test choose statistics enter the data in x1 bar is uh, 71.08 S sub 1 is 9.22, and 1 is 13. So that's our data for our females. Then put the data for the males like that, the statistics. And then continue on down arrow. And then we have a choice for a two-tailed left or right tail. And it just says any difference going up or down. So that would be a two-tailed test. So we, we enter, enter that. We're going to uh, not pool so we use the non pooled version and then we can either choose calculate or draw if it draws it'll draw a t enter a t distribution with the right degrees of freedom for this that it'll figure out some uh, fraction between two number two uh, natural numbers most likely and it will shade in the p value but we don't really need to see it we can just calculate so I did calculate. Here's the here's the, the results. So our alternative hypothesis is mu1 is not equal to mu2. There's our t test statistic. Uh, usually I call it t star, negative 1.905, etc. The p value 0 0.068. The degrees of freedom it figures it out, and it's okay if it's not a whole number. It comes out to be something there, and it and it reminds us what we already knew about the the uh, means of the means of the different samples arrow down and it shows you the standard deviations and the n values now if we were doing this from data this might be new new information to us all these summary statistics so for example if you are doing it from data you don't have to first compute all the summary statistics that's kind of built into the process here anyway uh, the the main thing was the uh, the p-value okay and the p-value is let's see if we can make our conclusion p-value is 0 0.068 and we're using our alpha is 0 0.05 so we notice that p is greater than alpha that's going to not enough information to uh, suggest that these are anything different and then we could do a confidence interval for the difference if we wanted to uh, so that's a two sample t interval Again, we do stat, test, but this time choose two sample t interval statistics, enter in the same numbers as before, and again, non pooled, hit calculate, and there's our, our sample interval. Um, there's our degrees of freedom and so forth, and so that we can see, whoops, that the at, if we, we could take, we could subtract the two means right here and see that this is about 6.29, uh, I guess above the males about 6.29 above the females okay uh, so that would actually be negative 6.29 because we're doing females minus males on their measurements on the blood pressure measurements so it looks like on average of this particular group the males were higher by what I say 6.29 but that's not enough higher for us to be able to have evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that this might not have just come from a um, random sample from one where they are exactly the same mean. Okay. 
but we're 95% confident that the true mean is somewhere between, mean of the differences that is, is somewhere between 13, negative 13, and positive, say, 0.5 something. Notice that zero is in this interval, so there's no way to conclude that we uh, got something, uh, that we have enough evidence to say that there is a difference. So this slide shows our final conclusion there.